Good evening. I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Nebraska football head coach Matt Rule spoke with the media this afternoon, among other topics, recruiting new staff hires and the future of the program was discussed. One question some have wondered was who will be calling the plays on offense this fall? Listen in. I, mean, I said that to you guys from the beginning. I never, I told you guys from the beginning, Sat was going to be the OC. Sat is the offensive coordinator. Glenn is coming in as the co-offensive coordinator to work with him. Sat's going to call the plays. So Glenn's going to be intimately involved in the play design and all that. But, you know, I said that respectfully. I maybe came a little turtle, but like, I just want to make sure you guys always know if I tell you something, I mean it. Like, I told you guys on this podium he was going to be the OC. I don't even consider Sat the co-OC. That's weird. Some people have looked at me like I'm nuts. Like, Sat's the OC. He's the co-OC. So he's the collaborative OC, if that's a better term for it. I don't know. But Coming up on the show, we'll hear more from Coach Rule's press conference. Moving towards Nebraska track and field, Till Steinforth earned the Men's Big Ten Field Athlete of the Week honor. In his first time competing in the heptathlon this season, Steinforth dropped, topped the standings at the Husker Invitational over the weekend with 6,097 points, ranking second in the NCAA. Nebraska continues its indoor season this weekend, February 9th and 10th, at the Tyson Invitational in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And finally, taking a look at Big Ten hoops tonight, on the men's side, number 11, Wisconsin, is on the road as they go to battle with Michigan and Ann Arbor. That, that one is just getting underway. And the Huskers are back in Illinois for the second time this week, this time up in Evanston to face off with Northwestern. Tip-off is set for shortly after 8 p.m. Catch Kent Pavelka and Jake Neuheisen at 7 for, for the pregame show right here on the HRN. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Hour one of Sports Nightly is coming up next right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you betcha! Natalie Potts, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week with a triple. Getting a hand on it with Sean Gary, Wilcher scoops it up, now to Williams across the timeline, Williams to the trailing, Wilcher fumbled it, got it back, drives to the baseline, 15-footer up, got it, got it, got it, got it! We got a tie ball game! Eight on the shot clock, Darian White, right wing, needs help, high lob underneath, Markowski gets a double team, kicks to the deep left corner, Moriarty with two, with one, her three-pointer, it's back rim, it goes in, you betcha, Kendall Moriarty with a triple. Huge shot, the pump fake by Mass, step back three on the way, got it, got it, got it, got it, holy smokes, holy cow, the Flying Dutchman with a big three to tie it at 65. Here are your hosts. Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. And good evening. Back with you tonight. We did not have a show last night because of Husker women. They went on the road, got a nice victory up at Ann Arbor, a come from behind one. They were trailing most of the first half, but rallied and got a nice road win and a heck of an answer for that team after the Rutgers game on Saturday. But tonight, it's the men's turn. They are in Evanston to take on the Northwestern Wildcats. These two met back on January the 20th. Terrific game at PBA. Nebraska, a 75-69 winner in that game. I mean, I say terrific. Fred Hoiberg would probably quickly go, well, we did have 18 turnovers in that game and still managed to win. But it was a fun game to watch, and I think tonight will be the same thing. I'm in studio. Jessica's actually over at the Hawks Championship Center as they have an event going on to honor National Girls and Women's Sports Day. This was an invitation that people could sign up online. They had to RSVP to get there, so it's not open tonight to the public. You had to RSVP. But I think, Jessica, right, every women's program at Nebraska is represented there tonight, correct? Yes, every sport except for softball, because, of course, they're traveling to Puerto Vallarta. They open up the season coming up tomorrow. But every other sport, great turnout. A lot of the young girls filing in, and they, they're spread all throughout the Hawks Championship Center. They've got some fun activities going on, but a great event. Some football guys up here uh, helping sign people in. I, I thought we were going to have to hand things over for the Johnson & Johnson show with Emmett and Ramirez uh, up here uh, helping out with the event, too. But, no, just uh, it's cool. It just goes back to the camaraderie of the athletics department here and just how everybody 
everybody kind of all gets on board and, and helps out in events like this. But we're going to hear from some of the female student athletes here coming up because it is a special day. National Girls and Women in Sports Day is an important day. And as we celebrate and continue to celebrate the growth of women's sports. Fantastic. Well, last night was a, a big one. I, you know, you felt like that team needed to respond. They'd already beaten Michigan a few weeks ago, uh, but they got it done. And, and winning on the road is not easy. And I thought that was a nice answer by Amy Williams' team last night. Yeah, that was a big one for sure. And, and again, when you start talking about the upcoming schedule and bouncing back off the loss from Rutgers, but then Iowa at home, at Ohio State, that was that was a, a really good win and, and going on the road. And, you know, Greg, I was kind of surprised. It was pretty dead in that arena last night. So I'm sure, too, just kind of creating your own energy probably was, was a little bit tough to, to maybe get it going with the energy-wise. But they found a way to win and, uh, you know, just uh, Alexis Barkowski, once again, uh, was, was dominant and um, – even and they didn't still didn't even shoot it well um, from three point what five of five of nineteen, but still found a way to win and, and get it done and that was a really big win for them to, to bounce back but to get that one on the road and especially with what's what's ahead. Yeah, no doubt. Iowa will be at PBA sellout game on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, and then they go to Ohio State, another top ten team. So this is a tough stretch for Amy Williams Club. Men tonight at Northwestern. It's hard to beat somebody twice. The women did it last night by getting Michigan on the double dip. There's been some smoke, Jessica, that Fred Hoiberg might tweak that starting lineup tonight. I, I don't have any more information than that. Uh, but Juwan Gary has not been starting. You got to think maybe maybe he wants to get his best five out there. I, I don't know. Maybe he goes a little bit bigger and doesn't start Jamarcus Lawrence at the point. I, I'm speculating here a little bit, but uh, there has been some smoke this afternoon that that Coach Hoiberg might tweak that lineup just a little bit. Well, and, and Juwan was in that starting lineup after the injury to Josiah at the beginning of the season. Then that's when Juwan got inserted into the starting lineup, and then when he got hurt, Josiah came back in. But you know. What a nice problem to have uh, for Coach Hoiberg to be able to have those different looks that they can throw at people. And, you know, I, I think probably most of them will say, and, and that's the culture that they've created, just embracing whatever role it might be. But, you know, it, I guess it really, my dad as a high school basketball coach would always say, you know, it doesn't matter if you're start, it's, it's when, are you in there when it matters, right? And so just, uh, you know, having a number of guys that you can call on. But probably, uh, you know, the physicality has been a little bit of an issue on the road that we've heard Coach Hoiberg talk about here um, over uh, the span of a couple of road losses. So maybe wanting to establish the tone if it's Juwan, um with Juwan Gary and what he brings physicality-wise could uh, probably help set the tone in that regard if he's in that starting lineup. You know, Juwan did not play the last time Nebraska played Northwestern. He was out for that game. Josiah got the start and had a huge game for Nebraska. He, I think, had 15 points in that game. So it'll be interesting to see. We'll get all that when we hand it off at the top of the hour to KP and Jake uh, for their coverage of that game. Hey, we finally heard from the head football coach today. He had not met with the media, had not had a press conference since December the 20th. He did meet with the media for about 30 minutes earlier today. Today was actually the second national signing day for college football. Huskers had a couple of walk-ons that they added and one scholarship player, and boy, it's a good one, Kiana Wilhite, who is from Tucson, Arizona. He's an edge rusher, so a guy that can get to the quarterback a little bit. He had been committed to Washington, and then the Huskies, their head coach, left to go to Alabama when Nick Saban retired. And so Kiana uh, asked out of his commitment at that point in time. He had not signed in December. And the Oscars won a battle down the stretch with UCLA to get him in there. And you might sit there and go, well, hey, we got Prince Well, we got Cam Lenhart. But Coach uh, Rural was pretty adamant, Jessica, saying you can't have too many pass rushers. And this was a guy that we just, well, once we knew he was interested in us again, we had to take a look at him. I was literally about to say that. You could never have enough depth, enough depth on the on that defensive line. And just look at the way that the, the defensive line rotated guys all throughout the season. You know, it was like a line change every other defensive possession. But, you know, having that many uh, options that, that you can, you know, throw in at people and you never know injury-wise. But, but just to have that, the you know, that luxury of being able to switch things up. And, you know, every, every kind of player has a different thing that they do well. And I think that's what uh, Tony White and, and Terrence Knighton do well is kind of understanding what those guys specialties are when they are best in certain situations and they have a lot of different looks and options and lineups that they can throw at people and you know so that here's another option that they can run into that rotation and you know again be able to continue to to 
I think that was just a, such a big key of why the Stevens line was able to be so good throughout the entire season because they were fresh. I mean, look at maybe this, the couple seasons before, how many snaps people had to play. But I, I feel like, and I, you know, I talked to a lot of them because they were certainly a bright spot last season, but I talked to a lot of them throughout the season, and they just kept talking about how fresh they feel and that they don't, don't feel like they're in the middle of, of such a grind of a season because they do have so much depth and they don't feel like they have to carry so much of a load and then play so many snaps. So I think, hey, the, the more the better they are on that defensive line. Well, and you still – you, we worked in the sack man later in the year, James Williams. He kind of got added to the mix in the back half of the season. And, and Coach Rural was saying there's some guys that they redshirted that didn't get on the field that he's really encouraged with as well. So a good addition today with Keanu Wilhite being added to the class. We've got some clips from the head coach's press conference. We'll get to those a little bit later on in the hour. But as we mentioned, it is National Girls and Women's Sports Day, an event going on at the Hawks Championship Center. Jessica's over there and standing by now with Andy Jackson. Andy Jackson, well, how cool is this event? You know, opening up the doors for girls to come in and celebrate with you guys of all the athletes here on National Girls and Women in Sports Day. It's incredible. I love that I get to be a part of it, and I love that volleyball gets to be a part of it, and we get to come and just hang out with the girls. And obviously, like, they're our biggest supporters, and we wouldn't be able to do what we do without them. And so it's super incredible, and I love that they get to see other sports as well because, you know, volleyball might not be in the cards for everyone, just like gymnastics wasn't in the cards for me so it's just really incredible that all these Husker athletes these female athletes get to just represent their sport and be here with all these young women I was gonna ask you what's the camaraderie like between all the female student athletes you guys seem to really support each other and get behind each other oh yeah for sure um, everyone's such good friends we can support each other really well I really really love just like the female I guess like student athlete like connection that we have here because everyone's so supportive of each other and we all understand like what each other is going through and like the struggles but then also just like the highs of everything it's great how important is it to provide opportunities like this you talked about you know just letting young girls see what they could be one day it's huge I know when I was growing up just seeing girls in my position that I'm in now it was super inspiring and I was always like I want to be like them like I want to be a collegiate volleyball player I want to play basketball in college and so just that they get to, the opportunity to come here and see this I think it'll be really inspiring for them and I'm super glad that like Nebraska does events like this for them. You talk about National Girls and Women in Sports Day and just all that it, it means and where it started and encouraging young girls to participate. What does it mean to you that you know there is a day like this where we can celebrate how far women's sports has come? It means so much to me. I mean I know that my team is a huge part of history for women's sports obviously with that stadium match that we had and so the fact that I just get to be a part of it means so much to me and I'm so grateful that I get to say that and it's just amazing seeing all these women athletes and just getting to support each other and be here and celebrate each other. How exciting does it make you for the growth too? I mean you saw what just happened in a year that you know there's still we haven't even reached the ceiling yet. I know it's huge and I'm so excited to watch what happens. I can't wait to see what women's sports look like in 10, 15 years just because I'll know where they were at when I was playing in them and to just see the growth as my years go on and especially once I'm out of volleyball, hopefully not soon, but when the time comes, I'm going to love getting to look at what all um, like these female athletes get to do. You talked about this, but just for Nebraska to do this, um, you know, how special is that for you to be a part of this and just the overall athletics department that this kind of event is important to them? It's huge that it's important to them and it makes me proud to be a Husker athlete. I know a lot of schools that wouldn't do something like this and so just getting to be a part of a school where women's sports mean so much to them and they understand the impact that women's sports are making instead of only supporting their like maybe football teams because I know that's a huge thing for some schools and so just knowing that they're putting in the effort to represent women's sports because we do put in the exact same amount of work as anyone else and it's really good to be recognized and just these little girls get to see that we're recognized and they get to be inspired. Second beach season, uh, how you liking it? <laughs> I'm loving it. It's such a good change from indoor. I mean, a lot more touches. Obviously, being in the middle, you know, you might not get as many touches, but there's only two of you, and so you're guaranteed to touch the ball. I love it, and it's definitely rounding out my overall skills, not just blocking and hitting. All right, well, you got the fans running up to you. We'll let you go. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, thank you. Oh, Andy Jackson, one of my favorites on that Husker team, part of that fabulous freshman class for the Huskers this past year for John Cook that made their way all the way to the national championship match down in Tampa. She is a delight. Uh, great to hear from Andy. Jessica is going to have some more uh, Husker women's athletes with us during the hour as well. Well, folks, Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms, visit us online at woodhouse.com. All right, when we come back, we'll hear from the head football coach. Had a press conference today. We'll play some of the clips of that. 
as we continue on here on a Sports Highly Wednesday night. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the kino parlor, is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1 4 through 124. Selection varies by location while supplies last. See Lowe's.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Farming Today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. 
I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. I said we. I'm actually in the Acres Broadcast Center. Jessica's over at the Hawks Championship Center. There's an event going on commemorating the National Girls and Women's Sports Day. We just heard from Andy Jackson. Maya Felder is going to come up a little bit later on in the show, the former Husker softball star who now works for the athletic department and was a big driver in putting this event together here tonight. Jessica's not too far away from the new media room uh, over there in the Hawks Championship Center, which a couple of hours ago, the head football coach made an appearance, Matt Rule, on National Signing Day Part 2. The Huskers added a couple of walk-ons, some that are pretty good players, and one new scholarship athlete, and that's a defensive end from Tucson, Arizona, Keanu Wilhite, who uh, Nebraska, he, had, he decommitted from Washington after the Huskies head coach departed for Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And then it was a battle between Nebraska and UCLA. Here's the coach, his thoughts about Kiana. You know, he's a unique situation in that he was going to Washington. You know, obviously college football's been turned on its head um, since uh, Coach Saban left and all the after effects. And so um, it was back on the market. Great job by Terrence Knighton. Great job by Tony White. They had a, you know, Terrence had a relationship with Keona and his family. Um, they were interested. They came to visit. Had a great visit. Um, even Thursday night, I thought he wasn't coming. You know, I thought he was going to go somewhere else. But Tony and uh, Terrence uh, really did a great job down the stretch. And he's exactly the type of person we're looking for. You know, on the football field, he's big, strong, athletic, physical. He's going to be a huge man with great athleticism uh, off the field. Great family, great character. Um, he's going to be a great fit for our guys. So, so good job. He's as he said by Terrence and Tony White to kind of stay on him. And you know, they, as he said, Jessica, last Thursday he thought, well, we lost him. He's going to UCLA, and then those guys wouldn't give up. And sometimes persistence pays off, and it did with landing this young man. Yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking, I mean, just that duo, if you're a defensive lineman or, you know, even a young defensive player to to have Terrence Knighton and Tony White stay after you like that and, and build those kinds of relationships, it'd be real hard to say no to those guys, right? I mean, no I just doubt. seeing what they did last year, but then just knowing them as people, I, I, I think I would, there's no way I could say no to them. Can't there's turn down a pot no roast. Yeah. Well, and then just, and, and then, but just such kind, genuine people, too. I mean, and, and just seeing the relationships that, that Terrence Knighton built with his guys. And, you know, it, it reminds me a lot of what we heard a lot about the, the offensive line room, but the, the defensive line room is, is is similar in that aspect, too, and, and the relationships that what they have with Terrence Knighton. And those are important to these guys that are coming in, looking where they're going to play. But then, yeah, then you see what Tony White's defense was able to do and how many young guys and, you know, the, got – we're able to make impacts and, and the, the growth of the defense. I mean, uh, yeah, I, uh, as a young defensive player, that, that would be the spot for me for sure. Very good. All right, Glenn Thomas, we talked to him last week. He's the new quarterback's coach for the Cornhuskers and does have the title as co-offensive coordinator. But as we played for you in the ticker, Matt Rule was pretty adamant about, uh, hey, we are, uh, he's not calling the play. Sat is the coordinator and uh, Glenn is the co. But here, here's Matt Rule kind of describing uh, the path to get Glenn Thomas to come to Lincoln to be a part of this staff. Well, you know, I worked with Glenn. You know, Glenn was a difference maker for me at Temple. You know, Sat, at, at, you know, Sat was the OC. Um, really wanted to, really wanted to get away from Sat coaching the quarterbacks and being the OC. And you know, because we're, we're not an air raid offense, right? So, intimate knowledge and experience in the run game and the play action game is really important for us. And so, we hired Glenn there. And P.J. Walker took off under his tutelage, and then he called it for me the last year. And then we went to Baylor and, and did a great job with the freshman and Charlie Brewer, and then had a chance to go call on himself, and he did that. So I, 
I just trust him. You know what I mean? I know that the quarterback's going to be well coached. I know I don't have to spend a lot of time worrying about those things. Um, his assessment so far, you know, we'll start the cut up process and all of that thus far. You know, um, this was in the works for many weeks before it happened. I just was obviously going to be respectful of the Steelers and Coach Tomlin, who I look up to. So we were, you know, I had talked to him and he had watched us and I asked him for some of his opinions on, you know, some of our guys, some of the portal guys, you know, hey, what do you think of this guy, the high school players? So um, in terms of a global, you know, deal, I think we all know we have to play better in a lot of areas on offense. Uh, the, the specific reasons for why, probably over the next couple of weeks as we get into it, we really sit down and watch it as a, a staff. Uh, we'll have much better answers in terms of, hey, what can we do better here? What can we do better there? As of right now, it's been all kind of anecdotal. You know, hey, I see you guys change the split on this. Hey, why are we doing this now? So, um, but he's an excellent coach, great family. His two sons are excellent, excellent golfers. They're going to they bring a lot to the, uh, the country club circuit here in Nebraska, so watch out. And um, But most importantly, I, I know this, the quarterback's going to be really well coached. So, Jeff, there's a little bit of and, – and Glenn kind of told us a lot of that in our sit-down with him last week. But I think there's a lot of synergy between Coach Rural, Coach Thomas, and Coach Satterfield. And I think that all is good. Well, yeah, and, and you know, just the, the previous relationships that they've had. You know, we've, we've seen Coach Rural when he was first even assembling his staff here at Nebraska, just – how many of them have had ties or connections with him, either playing for him or coaching and working with him. And I just, I think that's important in terms of the culture that they're building and, and having guys that fit in that system and just, you know, kind of understanding how they all work as a unit. And, you know, I just, I think just to me, I just keep going back to, you know, the relationships that he had previously that, and how long those guys either work for him or come back and work for him. And so just that understanding certainly between the three of those guys are, are going to help with as they move forward and try to navigate what they're, how they're going to move forward with the offense. All right. Um, new quarterbacks. Glenn's got those two young ones, Dylan Riola and obviously Danny Kalen, the two freshmen, and then you've got Heinrich Harburg. And so they're in, this team is into the winter condition. They started the mat drills this week. The coach was asked how much – are the quarterbacks being watched by their teammates during this time of year and during some of these winter conditioning, some of these, some of these events that they put on to show how competitive they are? Here's the head coach. 100%. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, none of those guys in the locker room care about how highly ranked you were in recruiting. And they certainly don't care about how many touchdowns you threw in high school. They, care, they, don't, they don't care about how well you played last year. They care about what you're doing right now. You know, they're very much in the moment. You know, Jamal Banks got here from Wake Forest. You know, he's transfer and uh, he's done. We do our competitions. He's by far and away dominating our team in terms of uh, his commitment to, you know, winning points and dominant winning his team. I, I can assure you, no one cares whether he played here last year or not. They know he produces. And so and we're trying to produce a competitive environment. So every off season drill, everything is competitive. Um, and so. I know that the guys are always watching the quarterbacks. Like, who is going to, you know, we lost, we lost uh, five games by three points or overtime. So we're fighting for every single point. You know, we're three points away from being a good team in, in our brains. So um, am I going to follow a quarterback that, that doesn't win all the drills, that's not out there throwing at 6 a.m., that's not there on the weekends? I'm not, I'm not following that guy. So I think everyone's watching everything right now. And those, those players, you do the offseason so that you can get in better shape, but – I, I want to see who's competitive and who shies away from the competition and who attacks it. And when things get really hard and the mat drills are, you know, kicking your butt or spring balls hard, that's when I want to find out who's who's uh, who's uh, the problem. Because you know, last year we, we lost, you know, we lost, we lose games, and the coaches would get up here like, you know, we'd run double under with a corner against Maryland, and it's a pick, and we say, hey, maybe we should have called a better call. Like those days are going to be over. Like every team in the country throws touchdowns on those plays, and our team, we need guys to go get the ball. We need guys to throw the ball. And if you want to see what that looks like, go watch Patrick Mahomes and how many plays are on script for him. He's out there playing ball. And so the off seasons where you, you in college, it's where you show your teammates, hey, I'm a playmaker. I'm, I'm, someone to, I'm someone to be watched. I'm going to compete at everything, and I'm tough. Then you get to spring ball, and you start another phase. So I think, I think the winner is unbelievably important. And I can tell from the, or the demeanor of those three guys, based upon, I haven't been there to watch, but based upon, like, as I watch the points and I watch the way they're competing, they, they, they all know that. Yeah, I just, 
Greg, I just think that this is just such a critical time for when those those leaders develop, and certainly the quarterback's a natural leadership position, but how you kind of handle this is a hard time. You know, we heard a, a lot from the guys throughout this time last year, those mat drills, and just, you know, how you handle yourself. Are you uh, early to things? Are you leading? Are you slacking? You know, just making sure that you're setting the standard, um, you know, for the groups. And, and you know, yes, it's it's, it's quarterbacks, but it's also just the, the leaders in general. Those guys that earn those single digits, this is the time that you do that. And this is where the you know, the first kind of starts to come to fruition. Who's going to be the leaders of this football team is during this time where it's uh, it's not easy and it's not fun, but it certainly is just a critical time for a football team. No doubt. It's, it is a good segue into our last clip from the coach. He was asked about, okay, you're into year two. And for a lot of the guys in this program, it's year two under you. Where last year, all this, the mat drills, the winter conditioning, it was all new to them. They didn't know what to expect or what you guys expected out of them. So he was asked, do you notice a difference in year two with your football team compared to last January and February? I just was hanging out with Ethan Piper upstairs, you know, talking about his student teaching. I went out and uh, met Ashton Houseman yesterday, you know, just to visit with him. They, they all understand how hard it was last year because they did not know what to expect. And now everyone knows what to expect. And that's, that's, that's half of life. That's what makes all of us anxious is the anticipation of what we're afraid of or what we don't know, right? Once we know, you, I show up and I know I have to do this tomorrow. I can do it when I don't know. And so we are light years ahead of where we were last year. I think the thing I have to do a really good job of, and you, I'm trying to do it even right now as I talk, is that like um, everyone cares so much. Like everyone wants to be so excited. Like recruiting doesn't mean anything about next season. It's just about all of our players understanding there's an urgency in this building. When you walk in this building, like, you've got to go. And I think we made some real steps last year. I think we fixed some things, but we're still 5-7. and seven. And so we're 5-7 and seven until we kick it off against UTEP next year. And so I want our guys understanding, like, the videos that we've put out are great. All that stuff's awesome. But, like, you've got to produce every day and you've got to win. And, you know, we can't have an organization with a bunch of guys who think it's okay to show up late and be average. And so... That's the culture. The culture is everybody has to do it for us to be successful. And um, I think we're heading in that direction. It's night and day, significantly better than it was last year. That's good to hear, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and you know, just that, I think that's just what's so critical about whatever, what Coach Roll has done that's found success throughout his coaching his coaching career, especially at the college level, just that culture. And, and this is when it was started to be built. This is when it was established. But you know, we've talked about this time and time again, but those guys that that came back, that wanted to be a part of this program, that could have gone to the NFL, could have, you know, hung it up, could have transferred, but the guys that want to stick it out, it's it's that culture, and, and there are times that it's hard, but it's also what really brings those guys together that, you know, I, I just heard over and over again in interviews about, you know, just how, how close-knit they are and, and the brotherhood, and a lot of that is built during these times where it's it's not really fun, and you got to grind it out together. It's, it's really what brings them together, and and um, certainly this is this is a big part of where that culture all starts. Well, there's a couple of little snippets. Again, he covered a lot, 30 minutes in there. He got asked about the Super Bowl. He got asked about, you know, how have the mid-year transfers done, how the young guys that just out of high school. And he goes, I really haven't been around him much, and which is true. He says, I'm really looking forward to the next few weeks because he will be in town and are constantly around uh, his football team, including a lot of the new faces that signed back in the December. Who's his pick for the there. Super Bowl? Uh, he didn't get asked. I know he's a big fan of the San Francisco offense, and he's a big Christian McCaffrey fan, so my guess is he probably wants the Niners to win. Uh, Johnson and Johnson just said 49ers. Yeah, well, they're, they're bad judgment is what those guys have, so <laughs> right there. Greg's a chief fan, so he didn't like that Yeah, answer. yeah, bad, bad judgment right there. <laughs> uh, Jessica's over there at the Hawks Championship Center. It's National Girls and Women's Sports Day put on by Emeritus, our great friends there. We're going to hear from Maya Felder when we come back in just a few moments. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We'll hear from Maya next. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. 
For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Farming Today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at Woodhouse.com, where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. Don't miss out on limited-time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in-store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice 
to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp here in studio. Jessica over at the Hawks Championship Center. The National Girls and Women's Sports Day event is taking place. We heard from Andy Jackson earlier in the program, the Husker volleyball star. Uh, Going to hear from Maya Felder here in just a couple of minutes. Update from Ann Arbor, Michigan leading Wisconsin late first half, 34-31. On the world. Along with still a long ways to go in that game. The Badgers Lost a couple in a row after losing that overtime game to the Huskers. They got beat by Purdue on Sunday, and right now trailing late first half to the Badgers. Top of the hour, we're going to hand it off to KP and Jake. Huskers in Evanston set to take on the Northwestern Wildcats for the second time this year. Uh, they were uh, uh, winners in the first matchup, 75-69. to 69. Well, the event going on over at the Hawks Championship Center put on by Emeritus. Uh, Maya Felder, the former Husker softball player, uh, is now working for the athletic department, and she ha was a big part of putting this event on here tonight. She's standing by now with Jess. Well, here with Maya Felder, who was in charge of putting all of this together. I know you got got lots of help, but how about this turnout and uh, you know just wanting to put this together? What what, what was the decision behind that? And why did you want to offer this kind of event? To inspire the youth in the community, honestly, I know that every little girl needs some sort of representation. So to inspire and then to celebrate really to we've grown so much in women's athletics and it's so awesome and so we this is just another opportunity to be able to celebrate that yeah, and you know there's a lot of student athletes that are currently nebraska student athletes that had these women that they looked up to when they were little girls how important is it to have those role models when you are young growing up in sports it's so important you don't really know that you can do something until you see somebody doing it and this this tonight provides opportunity for every single sport no matter what you want to do it just provides that how special is it just to see all the, the women student athletes come together and, and want to get together for an event like this? The turnout on a weekday evening for these student athletes is amazing. The amount of student athletes we have here tonight, I can't even put into words how grateful I am to have them here. Every uh, sport but softball, we'll let them slide because they're traveling. They're, they're playing in the Puerto Vallarta Classic. You just uh, are out of the uniform. How does it feel to be in this kind of role where you are helping contribute in other areas to the athletics department? I mean, honestly, to be in the professional role and still be able to contribute to directly to the student athletes, um, it's, that's the reason why we have this event tonight, honestly. And what does it mean to you that an athletics department supports you and wants to get behind you and, and allow this kind of event to happen here tonight? Yeah, since I've been here since day one when I was a student athlete, I felt nothing but support. So to, to ask if we could provide this opportunity, I wasn't, I wasn't scared. And that's just a testament to how the athletic department supports women's athletics. Just the year of, of growth that we've had in women's sports as someone that participated in women's sports, uh, how special is it to see it continue to grow? It's extremely special, and just to be a part of making that happen, to be a part of being able to celebrate those women is, I love my job. <laughs> All right, you know i got to ask you about the softball team. You know, they're ranked in the top 15 just about every preseason poll. They're getting started tomorrow. Uh, give us a breakdown. What do you like about this team? I am so excited. Obviously, I still talk to a lot of the players. I talk to the people that are on the staff, and I hear nothing but great things. I'm excited to watch them. I'm going to get my Flow softball account, and that's all that's going to be on my screen for the next few months. What does adding a pitcher like Jordy Ball do for a, a softball team? Well, I think we saw it at Fan Day. I mean, the turnout was amazing, and I'm, she has a lot to do with that. And so to have somebody like that come here and then – continue to grow women's athletics i mean we have to put more seating in the stadium so it's it's awesome and what about you know you, you played first base just playing behind a pitcher like that for those infielders and, and the defense uh, what kind of confidence does that give you guys yeah just as much as your pitcher provides confidence for you like it's, it's it works both ways and so to be able to play behind somebody like jordy i'm sure it's it's so awesome for those girls Maya, I appreciate your time. Uh, great work. This is incredible to see and, and appreciate all that you're now continuing to do for Oscar Athletics. Yes, thank you.
Maya Felder, again, big driver behind this event, heck of a softball player in her own right as well. You know, this event and that interview brought to you by Emeritus, proud to power Husker women's athletics. Well, folks, you could win a 2024 Porsche Macon from Porsche of Omaha this season. Fans are going to get a chance to make a full court putt at halftime of men's basketball games. If you'd like to get some more information or get the official rules, go to huskers.com slash putt. Almost halftime up in Ann Arbor, two-point game. Badgers kind of worked their way back into it. Huskers and Northwestern will tip off shortly after 8 o'clock. So only a couple minutes left of, of Sports Island here on a Wednesday night. We're back to wrap up the show next. Life is busy. Wouldn't it be great if someone could help you manage your insurance? Well, I do have a lot to keep on top of. Between the house, my life insurance, the car. Like you said, life is busy. A local Trusted Choice independent insurance agent can help you with your research, coverage selection, pricing, and claims at no extra cost to you. Which means I'll have more time to spend on other things. Trusted Choice independent insurance agents. We'll help do your insurance. You just do you. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. A few drinks at home after work. A couple of hits at a party with some friends. Over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness. A new daily prescription and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the kino parlor, is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Dot com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Just a couple of minutes left in our program here tonight. Jessica's been over at the Hawks Championship Center, uh, an event taking place to commemorate National Girls and Women's Sports Day put on by Emeritus. We've got Husker basketball. We'll hand it off to KP and Jake at the top of the hour as the Big Red set to take on the Northwestern Wildcats. Be anxious to see what kind of legs they've got, Jessica. Back-to-back -back overtime yeah. games of travel date on Sunday and now traveling to Chicago to play Northwestern. That can be tough on athletes' bodies to do all that traveling and all that extra play in those overtime games. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I, I asked Coach Hoiberg the other day when he was in studio, but he had said this in his post-game interview that it feels like we've played 100 games in the last two weeks, <laughs> but just, you know, just the grind of the schedule, and they, they played – a lot of games and they have not had a bye week on like a, a lot of teams but then they've also been to two overtime games so you know I just asked him are you concerned about the fatigue and he said yeah but hey you just gotta you gotta gut it out you gotta find a way to dig deep and and fight to maybe get a big one on the road still still fighting for that uh, road win but you know I, I think they could take a lot of confidence away from what they did at Illinois and maybe apply it to tonight and you know and that's what Coach Weiberg said it showed us that we can we can do it and we can compete with anybody in the league on the road you know 
if you can do it at Illinois, you can you can do it anywhere. So just hopefully they can bring that over and and try to get one in the wind column on the road here tonight. Yeah, they certainly need one or two more of those before the end of the season. Well, the women got a road win last night, beat the Michigan Wolverines, and ended up sweeping that season series, beating them in Lincoln and also Ann Arbor last night. And uh, making an appearance tonight at the National Girls and Women's Sports Day is Callan Hake, who was uh, a major figure in that game last night. Jessica's standing by with her. Well, uh, you guys seem to be having a lot of fun over here. Tell us about your station. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, we don't have a mini hoop. I wish we did, but we have cornhole and a lot of posters, and it's just been fun to interact with the girls that we see at camp and friendly new faces. How special is it just being a part of an event like this on National Girls and Women in Sports Day? Yeah, this is just incredible. You know, we had the trailblazers that went before us, and, you know, we get to go through before this next generation. And just to pour into them and give back just absolutely is our why and makes our day. Yeah, you think about when you were this age, this little girl, I mean, just having these types of events, these kinds of opportunities to be around and interact, how big is that as you continue to grow the sport? Absolutely. I remember being these little girls and just looking up and admiring those older girls above me. And so it's just a great opportunity that I get to be in the other shoes and just give back to the community. You guys had a big win last night, and, and you guys got a lot, of, a lot of people here that wanted to be a part of this. Why did you guys want to be a part? You could have said, hey, we're tired. We're in the middle of the season. We got back late last night, but here we are. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said before, like this is our why. We were once those little girls, and just we get to see these little girls after a game, but here we get to be on a more personal connection with them, and that absolutely just makes our day. I've been asking everybody, but just the community here to see all the sports come together and want to work together for this. How, how neat is it to be a part of Nebraska athletics and the women's sports, especially just the way you guys all support each other? Yeah, I think it's so special what we have within this athletic department and just how close we are, either in our field of competition, but also just being able to interact with each other at training table and to come together at an event like this tonight is just incredible. And then um, the big win last night, how, how big was that for this team? How much were you guys uh, celebrating that one in the locker room? Yeah, that was awesome. That was A-Dub's first win at Michigan, which was incredible. Um, and just a win on the road in the Big Ten is hard. And so it was great, but we're on to the next and looking forward to Iowa. Yeah, just to, to be able to get a win on the road and then bounce back, how important was that for this team? How much did you guys want that win last night? Absolutely. I said it's our revenge tour now, and I think that's exactly where we need to be and want to be. And so I'm excited to see what February has in store for us. So now looking ahead, you just mentioned it, Iowa already sold out, uh, sold out Pinnacle Bank Arena. And again, when you talk about growing women's sports, how exciting is that for you guys to know that the, the arena is going to be sold out for, for that game? Yeah, no, I think it's going to be so exciting just to see PBA full of red um, and how incredible to be a part of women's sports and especially women's basketball growing at such a rapid rate right now. Appreciate your time, Callie. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. Oh, what a good chat with Callan Hank again. Part of that victory last night in Ann Arbor. Husker women back in action Sunday afternoon. They will uh, take on the Iowa Hawkeyes, and as they mentioned in that, that game is a sellout. First time PBA will be sold out for a women's game. That's awesome, so that'll be on Sunday afternoon. We've got about a minute left in the show. Good turnout there tonight, and great representation by Husker student-athletes. That's a cool thing. Yeah, it really is. It's just so great to see, and, you know, every sport here except for softball is traveling and just great to see them come together and it's important you know and and just to have we, what we just saw at a fan day on saturday with all all the fans showing up for for softball fan day to get to know the 2024 squad and then what we saw here tonight just it, i mean it's important and it, it certainly you know you hear a lot of these women every single interview talk about how it, they were inspired because of maybe when they were a little girl and seeing some some role models that they can look up to and that it, it, it drove them to want to maybe be here one day it's it's just important to continue to have that kind of exposure as you inspire the next generation. All right, great work out there tonight. Tomorrow night we'll have Amy Williams' weekly show. That'll be an hour number one of the program. We'll also do some listen-ins tomorrow night. Husker softball opens their season down in Puerto Vallarta against nationally ranked Washington. We'll play some of that. And as you all know, Thursday nights means one thing. It's Cole's joke of the week. So that'll make an appearance tonight. Hey, tell those football guys to leave you alone out there and uh, get back up here to the studio safely. Okay, I will. Hey, they, they did great work out here. Everybody was all hands on deck helping out. So they, they were awesome. All right, very good. Thanks, Jess. All right, thanks to Cole for running the show tonight. KP and Jake coming up next. Husker basketball. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification on the Huskers radio network. 